Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Ben and I'm a self-taught web developer who went from zero to paid full stack developer in under eight months. And today I'd like to give you my thoughts and answers to a question that I got the other day from a subscriber that there was a really good question. And that is what's the difference between learning to code through the Odin project and actually working as a software developer and being paid to do so. And I'm just going to go through and give you some comparisons on a couple of criteria. This is not all of them, but there's a few that I could think of that are sort of top of mind and compare the Odin project to working as a full stack developer. So first of all, studying, studying in the Odin project. For me, at least, uh, it was a challenge in that I was studying without a sense of certainty. And this put quite a bit of pressure on me in the way that I studied because I'm the kind of person who really likes to make sure that I'm doing something correctly to the best of my ability. And I have this thing where I never like to sit down, I'm never inactive, um, or I never like to not be doing something. Obviously coding is sitting down, but you're always doing something. So for me, it was hard to draw that line to say, okay, I've studied enough today, and therefore I can relax. Because I always have that feeling like, oh, I should be doing more, I need to be doing more because the end goal of studying in the Odin project is to get that job. And all the while you don't have that goal met, there's this kind of burning thing like, oh, I've got to keep going, I've got to keep going. So that, that's the first thing that came to my mind when I thought, what's the difference between the Odin project and having a job? In a real job, I have a lot less pressure because I've crossed that line, I've achieved that goal. So I can go into the coding with a far clearer mindset. I can end my day with a much clearer defined line between my work life and personal life, I have a better work life balance at work than I did when I was studying in the Odin project. And that allows me to just focus more on getting the code right, rather than trying to rush through and force it to get through the material so that I've got another box checked in terms of what I understand and know about web development. Uh, another thing that I found different is in the Odin project, getting support was different. If you get stuck, uh, getting support is, it's okay in the Odin project. There's a fantastic Discord community where you can go on and ask people for help, questions, and there's usually good responses. But you're not guaranteed to get help when you want or need it. You're not guaranteed to get the help that you want or need and it's not guaranteed to come you know, in a, in a timely manner right there and then. Uh, whereas at work, I find usually it's easier to get the help that you need if you need it. And this was certainly more applicable in my first four or five months as a developer where I was paired with a senior. When I was working at FreshBooks as an intern, I had access to a senior who was so helpful. And I was very lucky to have a senior who wanted to be helpful. And I think part of his willingness to be helpful was because he saw how hungry I was to learn that I was putting in the effort. Uh, so that really helped. I had a dedicated individual who I know and who knew me. And I think that helped me grow a lot more than the Odin project where you don't have a dedicated person who's really your mentor. You're just kind of asking in a big community and hoping for the best basically. And it, you know, it's, it is good enough, um, but it isn't ideal let's say. So I think asking questions is easier in a professional context. And also the motivations are different for the person answering those questions, right? So in the Discord community, somebody is doing that out of the goodness of their own heart. Basically, they're taking the time out of their day to provide a response to you. Um, and there's different motivations behind that. But at work, you're now part of a team, you're part of a, a group that's trying to achieve uh, a common goal, right? So you work together, you help each other. And on this chord, if somebody doesn't help someone else, it doesn't really affect them personally. Whereas at work, if somebody doesn't help you, then you're all going to be affected, right? Because you now have a member of the team who's, uh, you know, struggling, maybe becoming disengaged, or maybe a feature or product, uh, some, something that needs to be done on the product does not get out on time, right? So the motivations there are different. I think that also the reason for doing things is going to be very different. Like your core motivations inside of you of why you do things between the Odin project and professionally. So like I said in the beginning, the Odin project is there as a way to learn, right? With the end goal of getting a job. 
So your reason for spending all of those hours in front of the screen going through the Odin Project curriculum, in my opinion anyway, was just to learn. It's to learn enough so that you reach a bar that then means you are able to become paid to be a web developer. When you already have a job, though, your reason is, is different. You're now, again, part of that team. So flip side, you're wanting to contribute to that team. You're wanting to contribute to those goals. And I think every one of us has that feeling of, uh, you know, you want to be respected or accepted, uh, appreciated, all these things that help you uh, become part and feel a sense of belonging in a team. These now become your motivations for getting the work done. You don't want to let people down. You know, these are the reasons why you work so hard. And obviously, it's fun to learn and, and see your stuff in the real world being used by, uh, by people. That's also very exciting, which you don't have uh, in the owning project either. Uh, the implementation is also very different. So and when I say the implementation, I just mean kind of how you do things. Um, in the Odin project, really, what you're doing is you are going course by course. You are introduced to a bulk of material that you read through, first of all, just to try to absorb some information and learn. And then you go ahead and you do a project to reinforce that learning, right? But at work, it isn't like that. You, The reason you're doing that work is to fulfill business needs. Uh, so you're not necessarily working stepwise down uh, a list or a curriculum where you're building up your knowledge bit by bit. You could be pulled on one end of the app, uh, you know, on database layer one day, the next day you could be on the front end, you know, another day you could be working in some background process, background job, or you could be implementing a brand new model with new features, right? It's, it's all over the place based on business needs. There's no stepwise progression or curriculum that you're following. So I think that that I mean you have to be a little more flexible and open minded and, and willing to um, adapt to change when you're at work as well compared to the own project, which is very structured. You know what's coming next. OK, so that, that's different. I think your personal um, your personality and, and the driving forces within you are also going to be very different in the own project uh, compared to being at work. I think in the Odin project, you need a ton of dedication. Like I said, you have no guarantee. You haven't necessarily, probably at least for me, I hadn't met my goal at the Odin project because I hadn't got a job yet. That was my goal. So in order to spend hour after hour, day after day going through this content, I think you need a lot of dedication, a lot of grit, a lot of drive to push yourself through to the end. Whereas again, when you're at work, all of those concerns about getting the job are gone. So now you can you can let them go and you can sit down. You can be a bit more patient. I think you can enter more into a problem solving flow state without that worry behind you of like, oh, I'm, you know, I, I, am I doing this for the right reasons? Am I even going to get a job? But that's all gone. You've got the job now. So you can just focus on the problem solving without all those worries of having to try and reach this goal. And that's that's a really nice way to enter your day uh, as a coder to get rid of all of that baggage, I think. Um, and it, I think it allows you to uh, generate more confidence at work as well. Now that you, you know, you, you've become a coder, you can produce code. So you, your confidence just builds and builds over time. Uh, another big, big difference. Uh, and I, this is where I feel like the Odin project does fall short and it can't do everything right. But that is the sense uh, of, of being a part of a team and contributing as a team member to a team. So in the Odin project, it's solo, self-paced, self-driven. OK, there's the Discord community, but there's, there's no group projects or anything like that where you're working with other people. It's basically no emphasis on teamwork in the Odin project. You get into the real world. Teamwork is extremely important. It's something that you as a team member have to be able to do and ideally become very good at, because that will take you a long way if you can work very well with people and that you can communicate things early and efficiently. These two things not taught in the Odin project. So if you can lean on those skills that you've developed elsewhere, outside of work or in other careers, that will be a huge asset to you, in my opinion. Uh, I think the workflows are also very different. So in the Odin project, um, it's very simple. You're taught how to set up your dev environment and once you've set it up, 
it's pretty straightforward from there. You know, you go into a new uh, module, you go from foundations into Ruby, Ruby and Rails. Okay, now you have to set up the Ruby and Rails environment. Okay, you go into Node, you set up Node. Once that's done, you set up and, and you, you, you're on your way. You, you do your projects and it's quite simple. The dev process in, in the real world is more complex than that. Again, once you're set up, you're set up, but generally the dev environment is far more complex. There are more things to set up, more things that can go wrong, more troubleshooting to do. Uh, and oftentimes, even months down the road, things will come up that you have to figure out and rely on either coworkers or documentation to get you through. Um, and also, there's no, uh, in the Odin project, there's no approach to your process in development. There's no agile or waterfall framework or Kanban framework that you're working under. And that's something you will get experience if you do uh, open source, because they will have such a process in place. But uh, in the Odin project, there's none of that. Whereas at work, you're going to have meetings and processes in place that help establish uh, sprints or whatever you're working on to get work done in uh, in, in pieces basically um, another one is the the projects in the autumn project are generally they're, they're fantastic they are a great way to learn um, i wouldn't say that there are many simple projects because i think each project at each step is actually designed in a way that it is a it's not too big of a piece but it is big enough that it solidifies concepts and it's challenging enough uh, whereas in the real world, your tickets or issues that you take on, they can range from really quick, tiny, small changes in styling of, of a button, for example, all the way through to building massive features that are, well, the one I just um, uh, put up for a pull request is 2,700 new lines. It's massive. I don't particularly like working in features that large, but for the feature that it was, it kind of made sense to keep in one big piece. Um, and it's a small company, so we don't have so many processes in place to break features down and, and put things out uh, behind feature flags, etc. Uh, but that, that is a big difference between the Odin project and working professionally is, is the size and scope of projects. In the Odin project, topics are always really novel. You know, you kind of, it's all, as, as a student, everything is new. You, you're learning and you're incrementing on your understanding and experience and knowledge. And each new thing that you're exposed to is, is at least for my case, it was brand new. You may be coming at it from some experience, but in general, it's going to be brand new content. In the real world, it depends on your job. It depends on the company. If you're in a growing company, you're going to get exposed to a lot of new things, probably, especially if you're in a, a smaller team. Bigger companies, bigger teams are more siloed. You might be working on the same thing a lot more. Uh, and you also could just get a job where you're doing maintenance and it's very much the same thing every day. But in my experience, there's a lot more, um, I'd say there's a lot more variety, but there is also the potential for some, some days or some weeks to just be kind of the same thing. And that allows you to get a little comfortable and work faster, but at the same time, it's good to, to keep things exciting and interesting. So you're continuing to learn, I think. Uh, in the Odin project, things are very low risk. So if you make a project and it doesn't quite work, you don't meet every edge case, that's okay because, well, no one's going to use it, right? It's just you kind of playing around and, and maybe some family or friends if you shoot them a link where it's uh, hosted. And that's it. There, there's really no risk if what you build doesn't work. But in the real world as a paid developer, you're paid to produce code that works. And if it doesn't work, you're not meeting your requirements as a developer. And depending on what you're working on, it can be pretty high risk stuff. If you're dealing with sensitive data, uh, payment information, uh, authentication, things like this, you have to make sure you get right. And that's where it becomes really important um, to be in the right headspace, have a good team around you, and also think through before you start coding. This is where those sorts of things are really reinforced that you might not or get away with uh, not doing in, in the Odin project. Uh, and, and then kind of last two points here, I think uh, in the Odin project, there, there, for me, there was a lot of self questioning. I wouldn't say self doubt, but a lot of self questioning and stress to just make this happen, make this work. Uh, but the hardest thing was taking time off work to study, to learn, 
foregoing paychecks to do so uh, without a guarantee that it was going to work. And I sympathize with anyone who's going through the Odin Project right now, and that's the mindset. You know, you're making a sacrifice to learn, okay? And there's no guarantee that that's going to pay off. But let me tell you, if you keep going, you keep working at it, and you improve yourself, and you try and find to do do things a little differently from how everyone else are doing them, I think you'll have a pretty good uh, opportunities out there for you, and pretty good a chance of, of landing that job that you want to get. Uh, but again, in, in, in the real world, in professional world, there are you're getting paid already, right? You don't have these self-doubts as much anymore. You might in your first six months or so, but once you get over that turbulence and you start to find a flow and your confidence grows, that's gone. Now it's just a job. You You identify as a developer. You know that you can do it and the work becomes a little more enjoyable. Uh, for that reason, I think. Uh, and, and then finally, I just say the greatest thing now is that as a professional developer, I'm being paid to learn because yes, I'm still learning every single day. I'm learning something. You know, I have a year and maybe 14 months, 15 months. I haven't done the math uh, around there of professional experience now. And there is no way I know everything. Absolutely no way. I am still learning every day but now I get paid and it's expected when you get a job as a developer that you will be still learning and that's encouraged because nobody wants a static developer who doesn't want to learn because it's such a dynamic field right and you've always got to be willing to learn and take on new challenges that makes you a good employee as well but hey you're getting paid to do it so it's fantastic and you're building experience as well so on your resume it looks great you have a job, you have experience, and you're getting income in the bank account. So that's win-win for me. Uh, and I, so I had, if I had to summarize it all up, I'd say that the Odin Project is absolutely fantastic. It is very different from the professional environment, but it is close enough that if you go through the content, you will become a good candidate, a good junior developer. Okay, it's definitely close enough. Uh, I can attest to that. I just think that the soft skill components in the Odin project uh, are, are not the, going to be the same. And I, and I think there's going to be uh, still a big focus or big requirement for those teamwork and collaborative skills and strong communication skills in the real world that you don't get to practice in the Odin project. So my final words would be work on those soft skills as well and in, work on ways to demonstrate those soft skills to potential employers. And then I think you'll be in a really good stead if you uh, pair that up with the owner project. Anyway, hopefully you uh, enjoyed that content and uh, found some things interesting here. Let me know below in the comments what you think uh, was interesting. And if you're a professional developer, what was different uh, or what is different in your professional life to when you were learning? How did you learn? Or if you're in the Odin project, what are, you, what are your goals? Why are you doing the Odin project? And what do you hope uh, to to achieve and what do you think would be different anything surprising in here okay uh, please do like subscribe comment it really helps out the channel and i'd like to see you uh, here on the next video so until then have a good one